I've got a box of razor blades. <laughs> this song's about suicide. <laughs> cool. And I'll just wait for the cyclists to go by. Okay. Oh, Fuck <laughs> off. So um, I'm back in Molescombe Wild Park, this time at night, under the moonlight. This location is a very important location, not just for the band, but for me personally as well. It's a bit of an iconic uh, place for Birdie's Baby. We've actually filmed two music videos here. Uh, the first one was Feast of Hammers, where the band got picked off by horrible, crazy people in the woods and got killed horribly on an altar. And uh, yeah, not to change a theme, uh, we filmed a suitably harrowing video called Box of Razor Blades here, which is uh, almost definitely the hardest song I think I've ever written in many ways. Uh, the lyrics are very uh, personal to me. It definitely uh, tells a story with uh, lots of difficult themes that I, I was covering at the time. So initially the song was um, an acoustic piano song that I'd, I'd written and first of all put it out on the Better Man EP. Um, I kind of wanted to test the waters with the song and um, see what people thought of it before we did a full production of it because I wasn't sure about it. It was such a raw song um, and, and so painful to listen to and write that I wasn't sure of what kind of reaction it would get. But um, as I was playing it at solo shows and acoustic shows on the piano, at quite a few of the shows actually had people crying and, and then coming up to me after the shows and saying that this was the song that had particularly moved them and why did I write it and what was it about. Then I knew it was a really important song and we developed it for the album, did a full production version of it and it was just as difficult as the acoustic version. Yeah, for me the most emotional song of the album is Box of Razor Blades. Um, Mish started writing it probably like late 2016. I remember she was in New Zealand with me and she was like I've come, I've come up with this concept and it developed kind of before my eyes while we were touring. I remember her playing it solo while we were on tour both in Germany and the US and literally me and Gary would just be like at the side of the stage just like crying our eyes out like every time she performed it it was really sad um, and then when it got to recording it um, literally like you can probably hear like sniffing in the back of the violin take <laughs> um, because yeah I was just literally crying while I was I was recording it it always gets me um, I hate it <laughs> So the music video was shot here, well parts of it uh, were. It overlooks the whole of Brighton and it's just really, really peaceful um, and kind of spooky too, which I like. And it felt right coming back here to film this particular music video and song that is uh, so important to me. So quite early on in the music video, there's also another scene where me and Hannah are kind of acting out some things on the beach in this beautiful place that's overlooked by these white cliffs it was fucking freezing so <laughs> I'm glad the shots came out really well and it was totally worth it what I wanted to do was create a scene which was almost meant to look as if it was inside your head or your mind and you're trying to work something out so Hannah's role in the video was to represent the overshadowing darkness and depression of the situation. It's quite obvious from watching the video that it's two people trying to coexist and one of them is quite unwell or maybe has a lot of mental issues or maybe both of them do and they're just trying to work things out. So Hannah's representing the sort of voice inside your head. At times you can see her kind of just being this ominous figure in the background but then other times she's actually like leaning over and comforting me so it's kind of like you can have this side of yourself that's very dark and depressing and maybe not that uh, good for you but sometimes you just feel like it's all you've got and sometimes it can kind of be a comforting thing and I know that me and Hannah have both felt like that that sometimes you know it's just you and your shadow but uh, sometimes that means something and you can you can take from the negative things and turn them into songs or art poetry and it becomes your best friend and sometimes the only thing that you can rely on is that it's always there. It's a bit depressing, but I think that's kind of what the beach scene was supposed to represent and Hannah's role in the music video. Um, I'm really glad uh, she agreed to do it because it was really cold <laughs> and she was just wearing this white dress. She's definitely a trooper. So we decided that Anna could be a tarot reader in the Box of Razor Blades music video because um, first of all it would be really nice to include her in it. We'd sort of begun the process of the video before she uh, joined the band and we didn't even know if she was going to be around for it but then we had this extra idea that she could come in sort of halfway through the videos like for this tarot reader role. I've uh, been studying tarot for a while now and um, I think the cards are quite beautiful and you can use them as a way to reflect on your life and see things you didn't see before. 
So halfway through the video, I go to this like dark room and Anna's there looking spooky, dealing out these cards. So we basically picked out the worst reading you could possibly get, just all the cards that are meant to be negative and just dealt them all out. It was more just, um, you know, an extra part of the video that could fill this instrumental section and make it look really beautiful. Anna's kind of dressed in all these lovely uh, bits of jewelry and the scarves and stuff. And then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're actually Thoth cards, Alistair Crowley's deck, um, which I just think are really, really beautiful people pieces of art whatever you think about Alistair Crowley um, and that's kind of Anna's role in the music video. So at the end of the video there's a um, <clears throat> very poignant scene where Gary finds me in the woods um, carrying this box that's all over the video and it's kind of like a curse box or a, a hex box it's uh, represented as a very heavy weight um, and at the end of the video I throw it in the air and Gary catches it he opens it and it kills him the box is kind of representative of a, a massive burden that someone is carrying. So when you do open your life to somebody else or you try and help someone, sometimes you don't know what you're taking on. And that could be a really, really uh, dangerous thing or sometimes just a really, a really sad thing that you might be taking on somebody else's issues and problems and it can take a piece of you as well. Uh, the final line of that song is, if you love me, let me die. Um, so that box is kind of just representative of just accepting somebody even if they're incredibly broken um, and that that last scene in the video is just a really really poignant scene the song itself has uh, themes of tragedy it's a bit of a tragic love story about trying to reach somebody maybe trying to help somebody trying to do the right thing uh, trying to love somebody and then ending up just really destroying everything um, so it's a song about loss and grief and self-destruction I only signed up for a lifetime If you love me, let me die